Hey there, I'm Trevor Houston, the creator of the Who You Know Summit, and I'd like to welcome you to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. On our program, we'd like to show you the job search like you've never seen. Everything from getting noticed by employers, how to properly format your resume, and how to network effectively using LinkedIn to drive recruiters to your profile. We even take suggestions from our amazing community. So if you want to learn all things job search, go ahead and subscribe now. Focus. It's all about the job search. So if you want to learn how to land that next success, you heard them. All you got to do is subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on a thing. Welcome back to the Who You Know Job Networking Show where what you know is important, but who you know? Who you know? Who you know makes all the difference in your job It search. does. Well, let me tell you who I know. Today's very special VIP sponsor is Rachel Drunkenmiller, and she is on a mission to humanize the workplace by igniting resilience, connection, engagement, and compassion in organizations, leaders, and teams. She's facilitated uh, nearly 300 virtual learning experiences wow. since March 2020 as a keynote speaker, workshop facilitator, and leadership trainer. Follow her on LinkedIn, subscribe to her Unmute Yourself LinkedIn newsletter, and learn more about her uh, work at her website, unmutedlife.com. If everybody can give a warm, who you know, welcome for Rachel Drunken Miller. All right, Rachel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here, and I'm pumped up because I'm all, well, I'm just all jacked up on Mountain Dew today, and I'm excited you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so I was reading your your form and I was going back and doing a little uh, a little research on you in here, and it says that uh, you're the daughter of two solopreneurs. Okay, mm -hmm. you're the daughter of two solopreneurs. Can you tell us about that and, and maybe how your parents have helped shape you know who you are today and where you've where you've come from and where you're at? Yeah. So it's interesting. I think one of the reasons I'm drawn and connected to you and your message is my dad's company. Uh, for a long time, was called Career Transition Services, and he oh. helped people that were in career transition. And nice. I've never known him to work for anybody else. My parents were both teachers, um, and they Mine decided too. to kind of, you know, teach in a different way um, through the work that they do. So my dad's a management consultant, and my mom is a financial planner. And um, I remember when I was in middle school, and my parents came home from a Tony Robbins conference, and they walked on coals and all that, and they walked in the door, and my dad was like, mom's going to start her own business, and she's now had her own company for almost 25 years, and so the gift, the greatest gift they gave me is that I never saw them hate work. Mm. I'm going to give you one for, the, <laughs> for your parents. That's for your parents. <laughs> That's for my parents. <laughs> Like, I just, I actually thought it was normal. I thought that work should be something that we enjoy and that was something that was life-giving and something that we look forward to and not something we were defeated by. Like, that was my norm. So imagine when I get into the workforce and it's like, oh, wait, that's not how this is working for Well, me. yeah, like, the stats are, are pretty amazing, and I know that they've changed a lot, but, like, pre-COVID, it was, like, 75% of Americans hate what they do for a living. Like, and then, you know, COVID came in and just shook things up a little bit. And people are, are now the great resignation and people are changing and it, trying to do things to fulfill themselves and make themselves happy. So uh, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I think that's, you're spot on when you're saying that. Thanks. It was a gift. I mean, and, the, and they really encouraged me to like, pave my own way and talk about who you know. My dad got me my first job as an intern at an insurance brokerage firm in college. And I ended up, st I was like, nobody says like, I want to have a career in insurance, you know, when they're coming out of school. No doubt. Up. <laughs> but I was there for 13 years full time. And it, it, it was that career. I was very entrepreneurial mm, and okay. um, ah. kind of paved my own path by pursuing things that interested me and that made me feel alive. And then two and a half years ago, I left and did my own thing. Well, I like that word. That. Yeah. Entrepreneur. I got to yeah. give you one on that one. Well, let's talk about that. So when and why did you start your professional career in public speaking? Because I, I was watching some of your stuff. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Rachel, she, she got it going on. So like you, you're up there on the stage is doing your thing. When did you start that? And uh, you're really good too, by the way. So what, like, what, like, how did you get so good? And how long have you been doing that? And where did all that begin come from? Where did it start? Well, I think one of the things I want to point out is that a lot of times people see someone doing what I do and they're like, oh, you've just like always been confident and extroverted and you were probably in theater in school and this is a thing for you. <laughs> but the reality is mm. that is 
so untrue. I actually avoided public speaking classes. I avoided debate classes. I love singing, but I avoided choir. Um, I was actually terrified to speak in front of people. And it wasn't until I started to get asked. So I was out of college, maybe two years. Actually, in college, I did research with a professor, and she asked me as a sophomore, we wrote a paper together, and she's like, do you want to come speak at this Eastern Sociological Society conference in New York City? And so I went with my parents, and I got to speak where, you know, I'm in a room with a bunch of people that are way more qualified than me, but one of the things that I've come to learn over the course of my career is that, and I tell people this all the time, that are doubting themselves, that an invitation is an indication of a qualification. Oh. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Say that again. <laughs> an invitation is an indication of a qualification. Oh, you know what that reminds me go. of? It reminds me of when God was telling Moses, you know, to go do a little something, something with, you know, over there in Egypt. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And, and Rose, Moses was he like, talk about it. I can't talk. Oh, I, I got a stutter. He's like, I, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, he I got can't. that invitation though, right? He got yes. that invitation, so God had already qualified him. He got Ooh, that's that, good. Ooh, right? that's heavy. That's a good point. Right? So I like what you said. Say it one more time for me. Come on yes. with it. <laughs> an invitation is an indication of a qualification. Woo! I like that. that Ooh, is, I'm going right. to throw did another I, one down. Did did I, I, got, I got to get one. <laughs> Ooh-wee. Okay. Okay. So you also said that you, you had a fear though. You had a fear of public speaking. So I'm, I'm very similar. I was terrified. Like literally I had my, like this, I'd be shaking. He was, he's not lying. And, uh, you know, so talk to me about your fear and then, and then what helped you overcome that fear? And then where do you feel like fear comes from? What is fear to you in your eyes? What what do you view it as? Well, I mean, for me, like when I first started speaking, like the first time I got paid to speak, it was two years out of college and I got asked to go speak back at my alma mater, which is a small liberal arts school. And it was the human resources program. So again, who, you know, a Yay. client of ours, mm. a, a client of ours was the HR director um, at her company. And she was also an adjunct professor at my alma mater. And so she reached out and was like, Hey, we do this HR class. We have a unit on workplace wellness, which is the field I've been in for the past 16 years. She was like, will you come teach a class? So again, invitation. Yeah. Like, I'm already qualified, even though I'm two years out of school and I've really no idea what I'm doing, but I know at least like 5% more than they do. So <laughs> that makes me an expert. <laughs> That's all you got to talk uh, about. Just that five. That's it. Right, just five. Like you just have to know. Like you have to be like one step further along than somebody else, and then they like think you know what you're talking about. And like I look back at what I created, I'm like, oh my gosh, the presentations were like garbage. But I gave myself reps. Like I started to get reps, and I got paid seventy five dollars. And I was like, I cannot believe I just got paid seventy five dollars to talk to people. And yeah. then it, it just started to naturally evolve. And like people started to ask me to speak at other things. And I was like, okay. And then I went through a journey with my health. I've, I've had different health challenges for a lot of my life um, relating to my like ear, nose and throat and lots of, lots of different issues. And I chose to, you know, they say, make your mess, your message. And for me, I'm like, all right, I've been given this mess of that. You know, I burned out five years ago. I was like, I'm going to take my mess and turn that into a message. I got you know, hit by a pickup truck in the midst of COVID, in the midst of launching a business. And I'm like, I'm going to turn that into a message. So I've just, what's really propelled me beyond my fear is this belief like I have in my living room. It's Jeremiah 1, five. before you were born, I set you apart. Yes, ma'am. Mm. And I believe that like in my bones. And so I'm like, if these, these things are not happening to me, like these things are happening for me because I'm I'm in a position to do something with it to inspire and awaken and activate and Ooh. give hope to other people. Yeah. 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 That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. that fire right there. That's yeah. that that's what I like to do. I like to awaken people, <laughs> yeah. spark them when they're when you see the uh, uh, what's that that song dry bones come alive right and you see yeah. dry you see bones. you see them and they're dry and you you're and looking these at bones them. live yeah you see you're, you're watching this and they, and they don't have any light in their eyes and you know they're hopeless you're like that's 
the state of mind that they're in, yeah. the mindset. And if you can go in and activate them and you see that light come back on, you know what I'm talking about, Rachel. Like, there's nothing better than that. There's no money out there. There's no there's no other greater reward than to, than to be able to speak life into somebody and watch them come to life again. It's That's amazing. a good one. Hey, Rachel, I was studying it. Thanks for linking in with me because I started studying your profile and I saw all of this information on singing. And I said, you know what? Now, I cannot sing. Oh, my God. But tell us a little bit about how singing has sparked your, what you're doing, what, what God made you as a person. It sounds like you are out there doing what God put you on earth to do, and that's cool. I want to put her on the spot and see if, yeah. she'll, sing, if she'll sing for I us. wasn't going to ask you like, to do that, but that's true. Like, hold on, hold on. I mean, we're, you know, we're laughing about everything. I mean, we're just talking about, you know, overcoming How fears. We, tell us about it, it before you that? do. Tell us about it a little bit. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I love singing since so I was really little, but like a lot of us, I like, I kept my light under a bushel, right? Like I love to do this thing, but just for myself, like it, it's really vulnerable to sing, you know, like in front of oh, people. Oh man, is it ever? Oh yeah. It's like, you could be judged, you could be critiqued. I mean, gosh, all you have to do is watch one episode of American Idol and everyone's <laughs> like, like destroying people, you know? And and, and so I love to do it, but and it gave me so much joy, but I wouldn't do it in public, you know, and it wasn't until my senior year or my senior of high school, I took voice lessons. They made me sing at the concert. I hated it. I couldn't wait to sit down. And then I, my junior year of college came back from a semester abroad in Spain. It's the power of having novel experiences, you know, of, of going someplace new and, and challenging yourself. And I came back and something in me was different. And I tried out for the gospel choir. Mm. Um, yeah, oh, wow. college gospel choir and, um, this, the, the lyric of the song, I mean, my voice is a little, it, it's, it's been a little bit like held back lately, but I'm going to let the spirit move. I can do a little snippet of that. Song. Oh, let's oh, go. There you okay. go. Oh, it's all. We're all about spirit snippets. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the song goes like this. This morning when I Ooh. rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Ooh. This morning when I rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will take care of me, will provide for me. Lead and guide me all the way, yeah, all the way. Mm. Oh, snap. With the bow. That, yo, but dump that bow. Dump the whole the bow. The whole bow. Rachel, you are anointed with that girl. That's a, And you know what's crazy is you mentioned that you have challenges with ear, nose, and throat things. So that shows you how powerful God's word is right there. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm not going to say it. I can't say it. <laughs> Tell them, Trevor. Tell them, Chuck, Chuck Prentville said, okay, Trevor she Holmes. can sing. Yeah. Golly, Rachel. <laughs> okay, all right. So, wow. On, ooh, one, I got to get some more of that. You number two, get that. Well, once you started doing that, okay, because um, like you said, you used to sing in private, and now you just sang about the whole audience. I'm sure the audience. Hey, audience, let me get a scale of one to ten over here. on. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Scale it out. Scale of one to ten. Um, tens only, um, <laughs> plus, but, um, God, but scale, no, so scale of 10 to 10. I'm pretty sure though, that like that has helped to build some confidence, right? Ooh. Right. Oh, I mean, well, I didn't do it. So I didn't integrate this into my speaking at all until three years ago. I went through a program called heroic public speaking, um, with Michael Port and Amy Port. And we, we, it was like this six month program and we wrote scripts and we worked with writing coaches and improv coaches. And I was telling, we had like this two minute improv activity where we had to tell a meaningful story. And I was matched with this guy, James Leith. And I was telling the story about the gospel choir thing, about how I found my voice and I, I stood in the church and I waited till everybody left. And I stood at the mic and I closed my eyes and I sang that lyric and then I got my first solo. Um, and then I had to solo every semester after that. And I was telling that story. He's like, oh, you tell that story every time you speak, right? And I was like, no, I've never told that story on stage. He was like, what are you doing? So I, at the last minute, integrated the singing snippet. I was with my writing coach. I was like, should I like actually sing when I mm -hmm. talk about the story of when I sing? And she was like, is this a rhetorical question? Like, 
it's like, should I use my superpower? You know, relating to this conversation, it's like, that's we a superpower. That, we minimize the thing that's our gift. Mm. Say it again. Judge it when Say we it again. It out there. We minimize we min- our, we minimize the thing that's our gift, right? Yes. That that's exact that that right there. Go ahead and hit a mic on that. Hit that hit that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Keep them go. going, mm. Mark. Keep them going. It's yeah. so true. It's so true. Okay, so let me let me explain and I I want to relate here. So for me, I was terrified. Remember I said I was terrified of public speaking. Right? There there's a reason why I was terrified of it. Is because the enemy does not want you to be successful in your gift. Think not about it. Not at all. God gave you a gift. And the enemy wants to destroy that. And so he wants to make you afraid of your own gift. And you just like, ah, I was like, oh, I don't want to talk. I don't want to do public speaking or whatever. And look, we're doing this now. Same with you. You, you know, you got a gift, girl. You got a voice. That, that's a, We're going to see that. I think we're right? going to see that in the future. I really think something's going to happen. And if I can help that, I got a big old network, girl. <laughs> How many in the audience I'd like to hear down in the chat, if you have a gift, Something that you know has been given to you by God. And let me know if it terrifies you. Yeah. Let me know if it, mm-hmm. if it literally uh, is, is just terrifying. And then, yeah. So, and, so I just think that's amazing. So, okay. So you overcame that. You started yeah. using it. You're doing your public mm-hmm. speaking. You're out there crushing it. Okay. Let's talk about some of the uh, confidence building tools because you, you talk a lot about building confidence in yourself and your strengths and your skills. What tools or practices do you find most helpful for job seekers? Uh. Right to, to build their confidence? Because you know a lot of times these job seekers, they're getting rejected. Man, they feel- Over and over again, yeah. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what would you recommend for someone like that? There's a couple things I like to do. Some involve other people and some you can do by yourself. Um, Some of them, one of them is really around elevating and getting clear about what your strengths are. So there's a practice I learned out of the University of Michigan called the reflected best self. And the way that it works is you make a list of like six to eight people that know you, you know, pretty well across different areas of your life. And you reach out to them. You can do this by email. So it's like not as scary. And you just reach out and say, hey, I'm doing some like professional growth and, um, you know, in this transitional point in my career. And you're somebody who knows me well. Can you tell me a story about a time where you've seen me at my best? Mm. Oh, what what strengths showed up? What did you see? Basically, like what showed up when I showed up and mm. by allowing other people to reflect back the goodness they see in us, we start to get a clearer picture of what it is that we do well that oftentimes like we take for granted. Like a lot of time what we get reflected back, we're like, well, yeah, I do that. It's like, well, yeah, like not everybody does that. <laughs> like You're good at that. <laughs> That's so true because a lot of times we don't see our own, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, uh, Mark says it best. He says, we're too close to the trees to see the forest, right? We're, we're, we're in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we don't always see what other people see and the qualities and the traits and all of that stuff. And so, uh, I'd like to ask uh, the audience to also tell tell me in here what, what how did you frame it in your email how did you frame it tell me what where yeah. where I shine or something like that what did, what did you say yeah so you had asked you send an email and say can you tell me about a time where you've seen me at my best see me at my best okay tell me in the in the chat I want to know tell me a time when you've seen me at my best what does that look like to you. I'd like to, I'd like to know just for my own feedback. Yeah. Our previous question got a lot of tens. Ooh, Two, we got some twelves. We oh. got people breaking. Girl, yeah. you broke the scale. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people are kind. You know, what I about? Think like, oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, I really think like when it comes to asking for this, it can be uncomfortable because a lot of the times we're told growing up, like especially women, like don't toot your own horn. You know, that's self. Yeah. Like. If you're ultimately doing this so that you can do something that's going to help other people mm. oh. and help yourself step into what you're meant to do, that is not selfish. That's not self-serving. Mm. Yeah. Love that. Yep. So what <laughs> about the motivation? Energy? What about energy? Okay. Because I know, uh, like, for job seekers, hey, listen, even for myself sometimes, listen, I, I got a lot of energy. I'm like a big ball of energy. But there are times when, listen, the weight of the world Okay, the weight of the world. And we all have that weight, guys. I want you to know that. Whether you're seeking employment, Mm -hmm. you're working full time, you got things going on, we all have the weight of the world. And when you feel that weight and you feel like, ugh, Mm -hmm. what are some things that you can do to help get your energy back up and put you in a position to go out there and start crushing it again? Yeah. So one of the things I I like to do is to, like, look back for what I call, like, the proof in your past. So... 
remind yourself, it might be helpful to journal about this. I'm a big journaler. I have like a collection of journals. Um, to jot down, tell yourself a story about a time in the past where you went through something difficult and you got through it. Like mm. as if you're just telling somebody the story for the first time. And doing that, going through that, like when I went through, you know, this car accident experience, right? Fracture my back. I'm like, geez. Okay. Well, Hey, remember like three years earlier when you burned out and got mono and had to let and lost your voice and had to like figure out how to recalibrate your life. You got through that and you made it through. And the way you got through it a couple ways, one is by reaching out to people. I like to say, don't hesitate, initiate. Mm, so, ooh. <laughs> like, <laughs> When you have that moment, right? Like we know that the people who survive stress the best are the people that in increase their social investments, people that connect in the middle of stress when you want to crawl into a hole. So there's a something I learned from Brene Brown called a square squad. Oh, yeah. And your square squad are the names of the people that fit on a one by one inch piece of paper that the, whose opinions matter most to you, people who have been there for you in the past, people that have been sources of light or hope or encouragement, people that have called out the goodness in you, um, people that you view as sources of wisdom or insight or guidance or encouragement. And you keep that piece of paper, take a picture of it on your phone, tape it to your laptop, keep that in a place where you can be reminded of that. So when you have a moment where you're feeling alone or where you're feeling discouraged, Look at that as your pick me up list of like, okay, who can I reach out to right now? Just text him and say, Hey, I'm having a day. You got five minutes or like, even just like send me a funny gif or a meme or like exchange audio messages like that connection. Connection is like the thing, even if you're an introvert, like just knowing that you're not alone and knowing that you're heard by somebody else and seen by somebody else is so healing and so powerful. So for, that's for me one of the ways it's it's that and then also music and laughter like music will shift your mood in a moment yep um, what oh, about that's, that's so true what about your work in dietary and culinary work right like how does that play into energy and engagement and all that oh a lot. I mean, I'm very intentional with how I nourish myself. I'm a, I'm a like fitness wearable junkie. I have an aura ring and a whoop band. I've had a whoop band for three and a half years. <laughs> w H O O P. A whoop a band. Whoop band. Whoop band. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All whoop. right. All right. Okay. They like you at Texas A and M. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a cool. It's a really cool device, and it gives you all this data about yourself, like about your sleep. It, it, it. It, it gives you data about, you know, you can track all sorts of stuff. Like, Hey, if I, if someone like, I don't, I, I don't drink cause I don't, I had acid reflux for 10 years and it just jacks my body up. So there's, I'm very intentional with what I put in the temple. Um, there you go. And, and so like for me, some of the primary ways I get energy or I, I do my best to eat like really nourishing whole foods. You know, I eat a lot of, mm -hmm. I eat a lot of plants. I found that certain foods don't agree with my body, like dairy and gluten, which is really what got me into culinary nutrition. I used to have a food blog and teach healthy cooking classes at companies, oh. which gave me a lot of practice in improv. <laughs> yeah. Um, Does and that, so do I, you find that it like maybe like an underlying theme with some of the folks that you're, you know, trying to help and coach that you're the leaders and or employees that that's part of maybe their problem is their diet is just all messed up. Their bodies are all jacked up. Oh, they've made no <laughs> connection between the fact that they're lacking in energy and like they're treating their body like a garbage can. Like they, <laughs> so many people just, there's no connection. And it's like, I don't know why I feel so crappy. Mm -hmm. um, like it, part of it's what you're putting in, in terms of food. Other part of it is what you're putting in, in terms of who you're surrounding yourself with. Mm. Um, like, that matters. There's, there's multiple ways we can nourish the body. Nourishment doesn't just come through food. It comes through food. It comes through rest. Like, so these devices help me get enough sleep. Like if I can encourage people to change one behavior, like turn off the fifth episode of whatever Netflix is not going away <laughs> and, and go, go to sleep, to <laughs> go, go to, to sleep, sleep. Go, to work. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep. I need to do that, man. I'll tell you what, I like to go to sleep early. Like I like to get me a good eight hours. You do well. Sleep. And so yeah. I, I wake up at five, but so I like to go to bed by nine. My circadian like, you know, rhythms are messed up. Know, That's I'm, what they told me a big word. But that makes sense. So it's what you're watching. It's what you're eating. It's it's the people you hang around. It's the environments that you're in. It's all of the stuff that you feed your mind, right? All of that creates that energy, 
right? And mm-hmm. or lack thereof. If you're right. if you're constantly hanging around people that are bringing you down, they're talking crap, telling you're not good enough, or whatever. <laughs> like you're gonna feel bad, right? Or if you're if you're around people that are building you up all the time, telling and championing you, well then you're gonna feel a little bit better. As a reason, God says iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. So be the iron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. A hundred. My coach just, I have a business coach I hired about a year ago and he just sent me that. I sent him a message. I was like, I'm so grateful for you. And he wrote back iron sharpens iron. So it's absolutely. It Amen. Well, okay. We've got to go to a real quick break. Guys, don't <laughs> go anywhere. Cause I promise. I think we might get rid of the rest of these oh, easy. when we come right back. Don't Cut go anywhere. the refill. Trevor Houston here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Who You Know Job Networking Show. We hope you've been inspired, encouraged, educated, and entertained all at the same time. For information on our different events, workshops, partners, or partnership opportunities available, check out whoyouknow.show for more details. And be on the lookout for our new mobile app coming soon. You never know how this show can help someone you know. You know, and if we've made an impact or put a smile on your face today, don't forget to hit that share button on your way out. Until next week, it's all about who you know. Bye.